Okay, welcome back to another video, folks. So I'm in Luxembourg. Marco's been an incredible host and feeding me great meat, quality local foods. Yum. And we've had a great day. We did um, a really nice meeting with the government ministers. That went really well. We did a really nice public talk for about 140 people showed up. Really nice group. And we had a great workshop yesterday with about 40 farmers from five countries or so. Yeah. Nice to see old and new friends. And today we've been on a little trip around to see three or four of the CSAs that are working here in Luxembourg. And so we'll bring you along. Okay, first farm of the day, Jeff. Tell us a bit about where we are. Who are you? Yeah, hi, my name is Jeff, and we are here at a, at a nice farm next to Eschelnau in Luxembourg. And uh, we're standing here into, into in front of our nice uh, shop where you find a lot of nice meat stuff and uh, transformed stuff like sauces and soups and eggs and so on, which we produce. This was a family farm and this was an old chapel, right? You've turned into... Yeah, exactly. This was really... Uh, the farm uh, was uh, part of the, the, the monarchy in, in Trier mm -hmm. and uh, my grandparents bought it and now we were here. And the, the chapel thing is, uh, at this part of the chapel they were praying and in the bottom part they were producing alcohol. That was the <laughs> history of the chapel here. And we make new life inside by putting a nice farm shop in it. So this is a self-service shop. People can come, take meats, sausages, there's products from other local productions and transformed products. So you've got, what have you got? You've got massive glass houses. You're doing like 25 tons of tomatoes. Yeah, exactly. We rented some glass houses and uh, during summer times all the Luxembourgers are on vacation. So you really need a, a plan B to, to store to, things and to transform things and, and to get rid of your tomatoes. So we made like nice uh, products here. So this is like a, a special tomato sort and we mix it with minced meat from our from farm. Angus. So yeah. it's a nice bolognese sauce, Ooh. for example. And you, you've got some, you were saying this is like a pretty special local delicacy? Yeah, this, uh, we call it like uh, Kretschekraut and it's a special sort of plum where it's cooked for, for eight hours and then we only have to add very less of sugar in it and it gets a really, really nice taste. Nice. That's really a nice uh, product which we do on our own. So you've got you've got your herd of Angus, you've got an eggmobile here, you've got tree crops, other yeah. things going on, and then the tomato production is elsewhere. Yeah, that's uh, 10 kilometers or 7 kilometers from here away, so on the road to Luxembourg City. Marco and I and his brother are doing barbecue, so look at this little baby. Dry age. How long is that dry aged for? Uh, that's uh, that's a, a part of dry aged from my Angus cars, and it's like five or six week dry age. So it's really, really nice part. And what's a bit special of it, it's it's from a bull. Huh? So normally you get this uh, cows to, to the nice uh, meat, but also we try to do is with bull meat. And if you see the shape and, and everything, it's really, really nice. And we're gonna pair that with some local wines. Jeff's been very generous. Thanks for all the gifts you gave me. It's super generous of you, but we've got, tell us a bit about the local winemaker. You're really into his work, right? He's a specialist in yeah, alchemy. That's a, a, a wine for my, for my friend, Josh. He started uh, this like uh, eight years ago and uh, He's, he's doing like more, he's putting a lot of effort in his wine to really to change it and, and you can really taste it. It's, it makes no headache or almost not. And um, he, he's not doing the classical line what you find here. He has probably also the classical wine sorts, but he is mixing them and, and doing a nicer product out of them. So here in Luxembourg, it's more white wines, right? It's not exactly, the yeah. for red yeah. wines. And he also has one red wine now in his sortiment, but it's mostly the, the white wine who is really common here. Yeah. Oh, it's full. Oh. Nice. <laughs> 
I always say comes back to chickens. So here, down in this region, Germany, etc., people often sell in at 50 cents an egg, which is better than I sold for in Sweden ever. Plus, food is similar price, so it's it's a really good business for those of you in Central Europe, typically. And this, uh, the security of this seems to work really well for you, right? This, we heard from some of the people in the conference that they've had troubles with this kind of setup, but they're downtown in the city where there's a lot more thievery, etc. But you've had no problem with that? Not, not yet we had problems, yeah. But I'm really thinking of a system with an entrance password or an app, an application to, Have to like go a membership inside. membership almost. But first we wanted like starting like this, that's easier for the, the people to get to know the shop. Yeah, it feels more inclusive. This is beautiful rolling countryside and this is quite typical of Luxembourg, I guess. Tell us like how many hectares is the farm here? Yeah, we have like 70 hectares on our farm here. And you see, we have really a nice view around, but it makes it also more difficult to explore our farm. Right? It's quite a steep terrain. So you've had issues with finding a suitable eggmobile and developing infrastructures. Yeah, challenging exactly. The, yeah. And it's quite, for people listening in that's not familiar, the land prices in Luxembourg are extreme. So yeah, you, that's... you've benefited from keeping on the family farm essentially it's yeah exactly the prices are like like really off grid it goes to 100,000 euro a hectare or something which you can <laughs> never pay off with with farming but you can also uh, rent land that's the prices are really okay to do it yeah 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 and that is like my biggest takeaway from this time here is CSA is a big thing. Jeff's got the CSA running here for vegetables and that's quite common around Luxembourg. And what's really impacted me here is the sharing and caring between the farmers to meet up, to network. You all sort of meet up and share challenges and yeah. what's going and help each other too. It's really beautiful. So this is the CSA. This is a self-pick CSA. I think it's 70 boxes. And the box schemes are very common here, obviously with a big catchment in the city. But this one is running on self-pick. So the members, they use a flag system and the members will come and self-harvest. Pros and cons, and we've been dis discussing that in the workshop because obviously some of the work is done by the members to harvest but then it's logistical it's a nice model for inclusion and you know families all bring their children and get engaged with their food but it's you know people walking on stuff or taking things that aren't meant to be picked because they look better etc but really lovely inclusive model and i think that's something i've always experienced down here in this part of europe is the csa and shared you know Community-based models are a lot stronger here than where we are in Sweden, for example. Really nice to see. It's a really lovely aspect of their farming to really include the community in a very, very strong way. And I think they all really benefit from it. Another really cool thing is they work with this apprenticeship scheme. So the university, I think to buy land here, you have to have farmer training from the ag school where we did our... Um, public speak on friday which went down really well had about 140 people come to that and some of the ministers it's really cool but that program the apprentices have to go and work on farms where you have someone who's got a bit more experience than you it's a really cool model like marco had to do that at the farm and now he takes people and they run their practical experience of ag school at a working farm and now these guys have all networked together and they share their apprentices so they'll spend a month at each other's farms and these guys running the farms all meet up once a month to problem solve etc it's a really lovely model and i think they've all really benefited from it like to have this really active bubbly network where they can share rather than compete there's no sense of competition amongst them which is really beautiful to see meet or take care all right so, Marco, you don't do self-pick. You, you guys harvest and have help from members, but you guys run exclusively self-picking. We have a part of pick-up. One third is a uh, pick-up system where we do the harvest uh -huh. and two third is the, the self-picking, yeah. And so tell viewers about the self-picking model, pros and cons from your experience. Yeah, the, the pros are absolutely, you have a bit less of work. You do not do, have to do the harvest. 
but you have to organize the, the garden in a better way so that it's the people can go everywhere in the garden you have to mark the beds where they can put the vegetables you have to write a big wall with all the products they are ready to harvest so it's it's a bit of work there but i think it's in in average it's less work but you cannot run your garden so intense like you do with the pickup system so until a bed is empty it takes time not all the people are coming every week and uh, so sometimes you could be more productive so this is probably more a bit an extense way of of doing the market garden yeah but you get this beautiful interaction where families come with their kids and yeah. we saw you've got this pizza oven so you it's part of your marketing is to bring yeah. people in and involve kids Absolutely. and, yeah. and I, I get like a lot of feedback from the people and like the children asking is this vegetable from farmer Jeff and that decides of eating it or not and that's, <laughs> that's really cool to, to see that stuff happen I still will have now like last still have a few pick, up, yeah. pick up okay. next, next week, week and probably the week after so that's the end of the past is there and you've got some of this beautiful beach forest also yeah exactly we do have five factors of forest and we are doing lots of wood for for my heating system on the farm and also for my brother so that's like a bit the, the winter work to do that's your your father's up there processing wood in the background you can yeah. hear maybe and you so you make these big bundles yeah maybe we zoom in there yeah, so that's advantage. like the feedstock for your central heating system yeah exactly the bundles are easier we can transport them we can put them somewhere that's that's a, a good way of doing it, yeah. So Modular polytunnels. Yeah. And double layer. And it's a double layer. You have this rope inside and it puts the layer outside. So, so you you've got insulation. insulation inside. So that each panel can be replaced individually. What's the, who's the manufacturer for the Europeans that are interested? Um, it's called uh, an, an, uh, it's called a thick layer tunnel and it's from I buy it from Nietzsche in uh, Germany and also to, to put the air inside you have one element or two elements where you which you can raise so there's a circulation inside mm. you do not open them from the side yeah you can only um, both sides and the elements pretty good ventilation yeah yeah it's, I like it. it's less I like the height as well yeah Winter barns, too wet on the pastures now. What does tell us about your Angus? Because this was a dairy farm when your parents were running it, right? Yeah, exactly. This stable was like for a dairy farm stable. And uh, at the end, last year, we had even a robot to do the, the dairy part. And then we changed it to, um, to, to, have the, to have the cows inside. And you see, yeah, now like 40 cows inside with offspring. We have the black and the red Angus cow, so it's not only the black Angus, but also the red. And the food, you see, they only eat grass all over the day. Grass-fed Angus, it's a good one. <laughs> it's quite, I mean, dairy and beef is quite big in Luxembourg, I guess. Yeah. It's like a lot of land is used for that. So you're running like up to 120 animals on the farm mm. exactly we can like slaughter like 40 animals a year and uh, for that year like half of the production we sold directly and we will do more over the next years so you've got your shop here now and you've got another shop exactly we have a little shop in Ashtonov in a village nearby and then we have two restaurants and three little other shops we sell our meat and that works quite good. So one of the limits we've been talking about is the, it's a really high cost for processing to then get the cuts back from the butcher. And yeah. you've been exploring with the final, uh, the environment minister about the possibilities of a mobile slaughtery exactly. in Luxembourg and exciting yeah, the, things. The mobile slaughtery would have uh, also mostly an advantage that, that the, the, the cow is really from birth to death this, all this process is on the farm and I, I'm nearby to do that and not that you separate a cow from the herd and then it goes to the slaughterhouse or something then, then the, stresses the, and, that is yeah. always stress for the cows and uh, 
I like to have this process here and also already to start on the farm with the transformation. With the butchery and the processing. Exactly. Because yeah. it's a really high cost here now. Yeah, it's really, really high. Yeah. You were saying like wholesale value, the beef is actually worth less today than it was for your father 40 years ago now. Yeah, exactly. We, we find an, an old... Um, an old bill from my father when he got paid off for, for his meat and it was it was four euro a kilo and today I'm on a price like three euro forty, three euro fifty. That's, and that's a crazy really thing. forty years ago, that's really crazy, yeah. So direct sales. That's exactly. the future. <laughs> These are, so we'll have a look at the Eggman build, but it's the, this is for nests for the winter location in the barn, but they're at quite decent price. So these have automations to close the door. It's pretty standard sort of roll away nest with the mats that you're familiar with, but it's got an automation that opens and closes. So this is for organic standards for 200 hens. 208 times, yeah. and it's a couple of thousand euros yeah last was like 2500 euros and the nest were really cheap it was only the, the automatic open and closing this costs quite quite much but still a pretty good price it's affordable i haven't heard of this yeah. system so it's still a manual collection you like on our egg mobiles you pick the eggs but Steph was saying they also make EU approved Eggmobiles. It's another German company that make them. There's quite a few now. That's cool. As most of you know, I've always been on the lookout for affordable nests. So for my sort of style Eggmobile, that would cost you maybe 4,000 euros to have organic standard nests with automations. And the benefit being, you know, steel sheet and plastic, it's much easier to maintain hygiene for mites etc compared to wood so to build up a Ridgedale Eggmobile with these would cost you about 5,000 euros if you built the Eggmobile still very affordable when you're kicking out 30,000 euros of eggs a year this was the original Eggmobile not many flat places on the farm to have an Eggmobile <laughs> yeah exactly but the people like it when they go around here and they say, see the sign and they see the chicken around, they are really, they like to see that. And it worked not so bad, but I use, always needed a, a, quite a big machine to move it. Too heavy. The field. And that was still the point where I say, I want to get out of the big machines for moving it. And uh, yeah, therefore I bought another one. This information you find all around the farm here. So the people walking here, hiking here, doing a bike ride, they, I see them quite off stopping here and uh, reading what we, are, what we are doing here. So it's a bit like self-explaining farm um, to, to, because this touristical region here is really important. There are a lot of people coming here for doing holidays. They are like, there's a lot of hiking here around in the forest and everywhere region is really nice to doing that and therefore my idea was also to implement that part of the um into the farm We're taking stuff? Yeah. Really? so another chicken caravan this is from chicken caravan australia right yeah but this is a you're not actually able to use this you have problems with regulations because of organic production right yeah exactly it does really even if it's a really nice system, it's not so heavy to move it around. You liked it because of that, right? It's yeah, light exactly. and I easy really, to get it around the land. I bought it from Australia because of that. I was looking for a long time. But now where I turn organic, it does not uh, get along with the organic rules. It's, it's just another uh, kind of system how you can have hands, but it's, the, the organic rules does not fit with it. It's not big enough space yeah it's not big enough there's no food and water inside, on the inside and, yeah. and so on and so on it's this constant thing that we've always been talking about on the channel with different regulations and people adapting the ridgedale style eggmobiles for germany austria whatever it is it's it's different in every country and down to the, the regulator you work with right it's, yeah exactly yeah. and now we we make here a fix uh, stable so in fact we go three steps back in our production of of the axe so. yeah
And it's the reason you're doing that is because your organic tomato production and things, you can't afford to... You can't have non-organic production on the same land, right? So you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a bit... Uh, you always have differences if you have an organic part and a non-organic part to do the same productions. And because, in fact, the changing to, to go organic with the rest of the farm is not so hard and not such a bit change. So I decided to go with all the farm to organic to be to be cleared and do not have the difficulties. Cool, thanks for showing us the farm, Jeff. Where can people find you? I can put links below, but where's the best place to find you? Um, the best place on the internet or farm sit uh, fromberg point, point alu. You find us and uh, I also do a nice Facebook work. You find us on Facebook. I put a lot of pictures and things. Um, and you actually have, there's some holiday lets here. So you can come stay on a farm and be part of the CSA and... Exactly, and if you went here like uh, vacation, you are you can go to the garden and get your vegetables and buy a lot of farm products. And I think that's that's a nice thing to get to know the farm and and see the region. And uh, cool. you are really welcome. Great, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Off road, and where else are we going then, Marco? We're going to see Terra quickly. Update there. Yeah, and then we're going to see go. Krautgard, old friends. Yeah, and Eve. Another CSA. That's right. Yeah. Cool, exciting. Look at these beautiful beach forests. So, not the best time to make videos for you folks in the end of the season. Everyone's got like a week or two left in their CSA harvest, I guess, right? Yeah, that's right. We're back at Terra. You guys have seen the old video I put out with Marco looking around Terra and the cooperative here. And it was back in... 2017. <laughs> summer of 2017. Time flies. It does. But we made... I made some pretty strong recommendations. You guys were in a situation where you all needed a little bit more cash for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And this, this scenario of increasing the size of the farm to generate more revenue. And that always rings alarm bells for me. And I made some pretty strong recommendations to you guys. That's right. Just because I know you well, so I felt I could. And you wanted to say a little bit about yeah. what happened there. Yeah, so here we are four years later. And uh, just to summarize the, the main points of these recommendations, one of them was standardizing the length of the beds. So if you remember, they were all different lengths. And now we've standardized them. They're pretty much all 20 meters with some 10 meter ones. That has obviously been, you know, a pretty smart move. We should have done that from the beginning. For planning efficiency. Yeah, and just for standardization of and... like nets and all the covers and the irrigation and lines and for everything. And for, for the planning, of, of course. Um, the second recommendation was, if you remember, we were still working on one meter 20 beds. And uh, we changed all of that to 75 centimeter beds. Uh, and of course, that's been awesome because now we're using a lot of the standardized tools for that. Uh, and it also makes it easier for the planning and just streamlining everything. So that was awesome. Uh, a third important point was the spacing and density of the plantings. So we, 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 we increased that like to the point where we now know exactly how much space each different crop would need. And that was, of course, awesome as well. We kind of increased the amount that we could produce from the same space. So doubling down on the area you were already working on rather than expanding right. the area and diluting everything. Yeah, we ended up actually like abandoning some beds rather than building more and, and producing more, uh, having more members, more baskets, and of course, more produce from less growing space. So you scaled up to like 250 50 boxes, last year, realized that that's a bit too much. And in order to increase the quality of life at work, we wanted to bring that down a bit. So we're at 230 this year. And you've also done a bit what Krautgard are doing, where they, it's a very transparent payment scheme where you offer like different levels of payment for the boxes. That's right. And you show the customers what the expenses are and what you will earn as a salary mm -hmm. if they pay these different tiers and that's also increased the value of the shares because people are willing to contribute to your salaries yeah so the price didn't go up but the options of paying more were introduced uh, and it was really nice and heartwarming to see that about 80 maybe 75 percent of the baskets were above the the, the basic one 
uh, only about 10% were in the basic one and then there was 10% on the highest uh, one as well, which, which meant that we could have fewer baskets and still manage to cover all our costs, which has been super sweet. That's awesome. And yeah. so what's the outcome of implementing those changes? Um, the outcome has been much better quality of life at work, as I said, the work is the workload has gone down and the stress and everything that comes with that has also decreased, which means we have more time to take care of not only the gardens, but also the trees and the flowers and uh, all the infrastructure and just have a much you know, better um, management of all the different systems here. Uh, while feeling a lot less uh, burdened and uh, enjoying coming here every day. That's, that's really made a, a pretty big difference. And you all got, you ended up getting an increase. You all got 800 euro increase in your salary per month, right? That's what we were aiming for and we basically achieved our aim. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Double sure. down, folks. That's the yeah. way to go. I think there's a couple of other recommendations that you made. One was something uh, around like how to sell. Uh, not only having the CSA, but also direct sales, which we introduced, and that worked very well because now any surplus that we have, we can um, we can get you know we can sell it very easily, and we've created a customer base for that. Uh, working with chefs, things like that, has helped us to pretty much have zero waste. Mm. Everything that comes out of here has is sold pretty much. Awesome. Yeah. And we also, I recommended to send Pete off on a holiday to yeah, singing to frogs. Yeah, singing frogs and to visit other farms, which we did. And uh, each of us gets an allowance from the company to go off for a week and do trainings or visit farms. And that's awesome as well. Yeah, Super nice. Sure. So the cooperative is going really well and it's a really nice model that means you all share responsibility. And what's your sort of typical work hours per week now? Uh, so the, for a full-time person, we're here five days a week doing eight-hour shifts. And that's it. We don't, very rarely do we need to do a bit of overtime if someone's away or if it's like, you know, if it's in the height of the season. But most of the time, uh, even that overtime we take into account and then we take it off in winter. So nice. that's really sweet. So you're heading into a bit of downtime, got another tunnel to put up and then you've got a couple of months after Christmas to rest before the new season. That's right. Yeah, some of us are taking a couple of months off, doing other things. Uh, some people are doing the winter jobs here on the farm. But it's it's sweet. We've got enough people to cover the work, and we're very happy about that. This was also one that I recommended you get. It's been quite useful, no? It certainly has. Yeah, of course. I mean, as most of you would probably know, it uh, <laughs> made harvesting maybe ten times quicker for the different greens we're growing. It's nice. This tunnel has changed into more propagation and tool storage now. Yeah. Yes. We didn't have any proper tool or workshop space, and it's great to have that out. Um, eventually there'll be a more like bigger structure that we could use as um, walk-in fridge and washing station with office space and education space above and attached to that like an open open space it's very storage. hard to get building permission here we're right outside the city center aren't we and it's yeah there's plans to in the next years build a radically new facility in the that's, yeah that's it. yeah yeah, we can do we can do that because uh, we're work on agricultural land, and uh, for agricultural purposes, you can you can build that. So we're going to go for it. Nice. Mm. One of the amazing benefits of having uh, extra time, thanks to all these changes, uh, is that we can now allow ourselves to have little side projects, things that we aren't ne necessary or we didn't necessarily have the time for, uh, and now we do. And personally, one thing that I'm super excited about is in our concern to build soil and to uh, bring in the healthy biology into the soil. Um, uh, one of the processes was going to no dig. So that happened. Uh, we, weren't, we were using uh, a little bit of machine before and now it's uh, since, what, four years now, it's uh, uh, no dig. And we've been, uh, I invested in a microscope and I've been um, monitoring what's going on in the soil and making compost teas in order to introduce whatever was missing. And that's really exciting to document that, to be able to see it and share what, you know, the bacteria, protozoa, nematodes, the hyphae, the fungi, what, what's going on with them in there and see that we're actually having a positive impact on the soil while uh, being very productive. And you guys actually just had someone coming around testing 
because there's concerns of the high level of compost additions. This is all municipal compost. And you were, what, tell us about that. It was all good, right? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. So there was a concern that there might be runoff that's leaching in and uh, contaminating the, um, we're on a water protection zone here. So um, they, the authorities came and uh, checked to see it, what the situation is. And uh, the, the results were not necessarily surprising for us, but there's absolutely no problem. Um, so I think the main concern was nitrates or um, too much nitrogen in the compost that would then go into the uh, cause problems. And the, the results were totally, they were actually better than a lot of other farms where they're not putting this amount of organic matter in. Nice. Yeah. So we started off our little farm visits today at Jeff's place, uh, which is all the way east, right next to the border with Germany. Uh, then stopped off at Tetter, which is in the heart of Luxembourg, in the city. And now we're heading south towards the French border, where Yves' farm is, before we end up on the far west, right next to the Belgian border, where Krautgaard is situated. So we've pretty much done the whole country of Luxembourg without the north in uh, less than an hour. So we made it to Eve's farm. Hey. Hi. <laughs> and we are in a different part of Luxembourg. This is a vegetable based CSA that you've started on rented land, is that right? Yeah, it's rented land from my grandparents and we started in 2019. So it's the third season now. Yeah, and you've had a big journey that we heard about in the workshop yesterday with pretty compacted land that's waterlogged. Exactly. Yeah, and so. so you started no dig and then you've gone to minimum tillage, surface tillage. Exactly. And try to address those problems. Okay. And it's, it's looking pretty neat. You're working with a lot of cover crops to build biology and... Yeah, we, we try to. We started this year, so and now we, we want to, to, to look how what it's, it's doing yeah. in the future. And what uh, gives the overall picture of the sort of how the farm is structured in terms of how big it is, the members you have, etc.? Yeah, so we have here 1.2 hectares of land and we cultivate on like a 4,000 square meters market garden and we have like 110 CSA members for the moment and we have like two thirds of the people who come at pick your own garden and one third who gets a fixed box on Friday evenings. Right. Yes. You guys use the same municipal compost that they've got at Terra? Yes, it's the same. It's quite woody based but you guys seem to get good results with it. Yeah. I mean, those guys are using it for no dig exclusively. and So what I try is to have it here in August and to keep it on a pile until January. It's so not fully broken down when you get it, is it? Yeah, so it's... Still warm. Yeah, so maybe it's... It, because it's changing a little bit more to soil if you leave it longer on the pile. You've also got these double skin tunnels. Yes, exactly. They seem popular here now. Uh, yeah, I needed some very heavy tunnels because we have a lot of wind problems here. So those are agreed for like 110 or 100 kilometers an hour mm. of wind. But we lost one with 110 kilometers. So okay. before there was a second, uh, a bigger one. On okay. Road, yeah. This is the same brand that we saw over at Jeff's farm, exactly. double skinned, yeah. nice quality. Exactly. You find out that you have, it's, it's going up until here and then it's going down like 10 centimeters over there. And so the main problem is this area. This is the area we saw that was pretty waterlogged with uh, pretty heavy standing water between the beds. But it seems like we talked about different solutions in the workshop. It seems like cover crops is really the obvious one for you, especially as you've got sort of min-till approach. Yeah, so this year, because we know it, we had a little problem. So we had um, my packs on it all the season and the squash were in. And so now we're trying to do with um, with green menu on it for the, for the winter. It's kind of a homogenous clay underneath, isn't it? So we it's have, the whole of the what we saw in the presentation is still a little bit here, but you see like it is full of water, so it's yeah. forty centimeter deep. Yeah. And it's what this dicked one week ago and yeah. it's not going away. Yeah. Yeah. And so your season is coming to an end now? I guess you've got yeah, a little bit 
one week to go. One week to go. And then what do you do in the winter? Do you tend to put it down to cover crop? No, we try this one out because one of my, my gardener who is here with me also, he is scared about mice. So he, he is, is not sure that we not increase the problem of mice and slugs with green crops. So mm. we Still, in, you're in a transition phase finding yeah, the best solutions exactly. for this time and place. Yeah. And, yeah. So you've got, your, you've got standardized beds and then rows of orchard trees. Yes, so we have 30 meter beds and we have like 16 in the row, like 560 square meters, one bed. And then we have a little bit of tiny grass rows and then we have some rows of, of trees, of fruit trees. And I can see some land hens down the end there. Yeah, we have our chickens <laughs> here, like 50. Nice. Right. And everything is done by hand because we have no tractor, no big machines. So. Yeah. yeah. How did you, tell us a bit, how did you get your customer base when you started out? Uh, we did most of the work with flyers in the post boxes of the people. And then it was uh, like a waiting list for the second season. Is that like a service where you pay and the post service deliver to each? No, Claire is our, um, she's a graphic designer at the base. So she is doing all that work and we order flyers and then we have local students who can do it for us. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so that created the membership and, yeah, it and it's like just this. been rolling. And now it's social media and it's maybe a little bit of um, articles in some magazines or, so, or Great. stuff like this. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we went through a few markets, so that's also something. Like they come to the garden to pick their own the vegetables. Tell us a bit about, I want to hear the pros and cons of self-harvest. What's your experience? Self-harvest is, you need disciplined people who respect the garden. But, um, so we, it's the first year we had a lot of damage by cutting in our dip lines and all this stuff. And people harvesting where they don't know or they harvest wherever they want because they think it's ready. So we improved our system how it how to um, put up the garden by with the help of our members. So now we have a flag system. We have a board where they can find where they have to go. And we have also done a lot of work with pictog pictograms. So the idea is that kids can find. Um, the place in the garden, so adults normally can do it also. <laughs> so one of our members even created all these pictograms for us. Great. And so we have this um, this board where everything is done for for one week, and so yeah, it's working very well. Perfect. So it's all about communication, and you've exactly. got it working good now. Yeah, we put a lot of energy in all these things, so it's a lot of hours, and all these hours are not in the garden. So that was at the beginning of this season one of the biggest problems because it was not so often in the garden. So. But long term, it's a bigger time saver. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also creating that community feel. It's and it's 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 working really well now. So we have less less problems than we had before with yeah. all this new system. So. Mm. Yeah. It's strange, but the main part of the garden is still here. So it's crop planning and this is super cool. Check your, this out. Your garden. So this is the. I think this is the neatest crop planning system I've seen. Let go. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about this. How does it work? The idea is that every um, family plant has one color, like cabbage is wet. So like we are on the market garden, we have to do in one year, like more cultures on one bed. So, and when I'm not here and when we have to improvise something, all my stuff can see where was something on, during the, the year. Uh, and they can put a new um, new culture behind. So normally when we start at, this, at the beginning of the season, we will have like one legal block. Sorry, it's not working all, all the time. So we will have like a block like this and you have a coat on it. We have it also on our young plants already and you, have a, and you will have a color on it. But this will be the, what I do for my team and then I place it on on the Lego board, like here. And so the team knows that they have to plant this on that thing. And when they have planted it, they will put this one in front. Nice. And then they have like this one. So it was planted in week 32. And they will put also one behind when the harvest so the vertical can start. And so you can manage your garden very fast and everyone can understand 
We also have a to-do list normally. You can have um, different colors of Legos, so you can put to-do lists on it. Like a black one will say you have to put compost on it, or you have a, uh, a violet one for you have to clean it, or all these things you can integrate everything in. Perfect. And then you can do like like we did. This we have for each each month also we take one. So you can see the evolution of the garden. And you've got a record of the whole season. Exactly, there. and so next season you have, you can plan on, on all these things again. Eve, I reckon so many people are going to copy this. It's, it's so cool. fun for me. It's super fun with Lego. <laughs> yeah, and so you keep also, um, on the board you keep always what family was behind what. So next year we, we know exactly what we can put yeah. again. On it. In like a standard sort of rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Can you make a green class? Sorry. Because there's also an, 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 an uh, I don't know the word, but she really should. So we did all this in Excel first. And so you also have a, like an Excel. This is our culture planning, but we have also the whole garden system in an Excel. I don't know where it is now. Here, so that's an Excel sheet with all the cultures when they come where. And then you can put it on the on the table. So my, my my team knows exactly where what has to come when. Awesome. And yeah, and so you can find the same the same code thing here. So even when we get young plants, this code is also already on it, and so we can prepare the whole board. Awesome. What a cool system. And to clean it, you put it in the um, what is it? Washing so this is the washing machine and it's clean again and so you can use it again next year so because one of the things is you can use, use papers in your greenhouse because it's getting yeah melt by, by water so this was a, a quite easy system to have the whole garden and to do it is chili and processed chili not so common here no, no. so you're so developing the, a new range. We have all these geeks who will love it. So we have different kind of chilies and different strengths of chilies. And cool. so we, st we will start, and this year was the first year we, we started to, to, to give it to Great. Yeah. So doing some specialist crops and products on the side of the CSA as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because here's a member harvesting. So that's really cool. All of the members come harvest here, but also yeah. the people that pick up a box come to the farm to pick it up. So there's zero delivery, which is a really nice model. And you found that's no problem. Like you're quite well populated around here, I guess. You're not too remote for people to come out. And no, we, yeah, we have to do because we have one. Uh, we have we want to engage one gardener more so we need some money plus so we need also like 30 members more for next season yeah 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 tell us a bit about it like one thing that's really impressed me here in luxembourg is like you guys really meet and talk and share problems work together to help each other yeah that's like is that just happened organically and yeah it's organically and even uh, before I created my farm, I was all already in this uh, group and so they helped me a lot by giving inspiration or um, helping with, uh, with problems or at the beginning. It's like a real cooperative movement, it's not like competition it, it's, between you It's more you like friends, yeah. but everyone has his own business and once a month we meet together on, on the farm and we discuss problems. That's really cool. Or we do like inviting you or organizing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Super nice to see. Yeah. Really nice. I think it's a little bit special. Inventive too. So it's, it's, the crop is not still too earned, but how you can fix how much people can take. So we have this going. Fix that. So these are our, our measurement instruments that people know. So one, because they cannot weight something so we have to find some creative solution so we have how does that work are you saying this is marking how much of the bed you can harvest yeah, exactly. ah perfect so this one if you have other cultures we have an orange one as well. these are kind of like it seems like this style of production is quite well established in this part of europe in germany etc where you have these yeah. like simple visual means and yeah. efficient ways to do this yeah. And you found, like, with the education you do with the members, you find that it's okay, they, they stick to the paths and don't walk on stuff so much anymore? 
Uh, we meet every man member before the season, and they uh, exactly showed how to, uh, to come into the garden, and yeah. what they have to do and what not. And Great. They even talk to the kids, and it's their food, it's their garden. So they, uh, I think they, they, they will keep it also respectfully. Mm. To the garden That's great. It, yeah. yeah, nice. So more chicken caravans. These are the Australian ones too. Yeah, exactly. Nice. We want to have more, but they are so expensive now that it's not wantable to have more. Yeah. yeah so. so you're planting orchard out here? Yeah. Making sort of agroforestry rows that the birds can move between? Yeah. And we plant now, next month we plant two rows more, and then we have a space here where chickens and sheep can go around to nice. build some soil. Are you aiming to keep the farm this sort of size, or are you going to grow it because it's your family's land? You've got possibility to rent more. What's your For feeling? the moment, I want to stay small like this, and if we one day we, we get the opportunity to have more land on, on that side, we can mirror maybe the high part of the farm and keep this for the animals. Yeah. After. Yeah. Thing you have for each vegetable, you will have one. This is Claire. Is this your work? <laughs> yeah, also. Yeah. Claire is a graphic designer as well as the grower. Very nice. So this is all part of the visual communication to yeah. let people know about what they're getting, how to harvest it, etc. And what they can eat and what they need to harvest. Yeah. yeah so. Super nice. So it's about 4,000 square meters of bed space. Exactly. How's the economy going for you? Uh, this year we did like an income of 110,000 euros with 110 members. Great. And, um, it's not switching to pay all the salaries, but next year we have to be a bit, a little bit more productive, and uh, yeah, to get a little bit more money. What sort the, of increase do you need? Do you think uh, the target is well, like one hundred forty-five thousand euros for next season? Great. On the same area, we are not increasing by space, but like for the sales farmers, you need more space to produce, so we can do something on on on, on the space we have now. Yeah. Uh, and produce more on this little surplus. But uh, for reference for folks listening from around the world, I mean, we're in Luxembourg, salaries are pretty high here, like a qualified salary in, yes, in so this part of the world is what? Me, I, like a boss, I need like 38,000 euros for one salary. Yeah. So, and so we are now four, so I need three full-time salaries. It will be like 105,000 euros of this. Yeah. Of this 145 will be salaries. Yeah. yeah. What do you estimate the running costs to be next year? The one, so we estimated like we need 40,000 euros extra of the salaries to run the business next year. Yeah. And it's quite common in this part of Europe to buy in young plants. I know you do some of your starts. Do you buy in plants also? Yeah, we do like one sort at our own and we work with an, um, with an organization for people with special needs who produce for us young plants. Uh, yes, two thirds of them are, are produced by them because we don't need big units. We only need like three plates of 77 for 140 members. And so we have to build this Luxembourgish uh, réseau of uh, young plants too. So nice. And it was an opportunity you now with this structure to have this uh, Luxembourg. Too. Mm, super cool. Yeah. So third season, yes. things are still building up, but you look like you're doing great. And you've got plans for, you were saying about the neighboring land sprayed. So you're, you're blocking a bit of the with the greenhouses, but you're putting in hedgerows next year along the yeah. fence line. You want to build pond systems, more trees. On, on, on the bottom of the farm, and then we can maybe take it to irrigate if we find a solution to keep the yeah. wastewater away from the neighbor. Cool. Yeah. Super nice. It's a shame to see it this time of year yeah, when it's yeah. raining, but you, I think everyone knows uh, what it looks like in the summer too. Tell us about you. Who are you, um, sir? I'm the Upland Cheese from here. I am for two days at school and the other three days from the week I am here nice. to work. And this and is like a, the common system in Luxembourg. You yeah. have to do training on the farm, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It was it's really the, cool. The, uh, the first year was uh, at school, the whole year. And for the second year you need a, a bus. A farm. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's a problem in some ways because there's more people that want to start farming than there are farms, right? Yeah, some people they don't find a farm and that's, that's sad. So, yeah. Because they can't complete they, the they, training. Yeah, or, or they can't find a, 
a bus or a farm yeah. because there are not so many farmers here in Luxembourg. And yeah. how's that experience for you, like as someone that's going into farming? Are you learning everything you need to know? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. And you're also part of the network with these guys that you see yeah. all the other farms here. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool community. Really cool. It's nice to be a part. Yeah. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Tell you just, I, I want you to say that for the camera. So this set of beds on the other side, you can see the topography of the farm here. Most of the beds are up at the top there, and it's this big slope. So it, you're saying these beds you don't actually come to so much in yeah, the year. Yeah, we come not so much because it's so far away to also for my stuff. And so sometimes they are a little bit uh, alone here, like a week or two. And so we had uh, heavy wheat on this uh, this year and on all the farm because we had not enough manpower. And so all the farmers were in this CSA model came to to my farm for one day and like they, from Terra and Krakow. Yeah, we had like thirty gardeners here, and they oh, cleaned the whole garden in one day. So it was <laughs> it was really really amazing huh? because I was close to stop everything to yeah and, wow. and so it was a, a big motivation for the whole season again to, that's to beautiful go, to go away yeah. power community yeah it's, it's i think it's quite unique what we did yeah. Mm. Yeah. what's the um sort of investment you've had to put in you said you're running debt free yeah so the first year i put like forty thousand euros of my own capital in it uh like two years of salary so you basically did. didn't pay yourself for two years okay. so that you could run debt free. Yeah. yeah, well, that sounds pretty smart. I guess these tunnels are quite a big investment. They're not cheapest ones, yeah, they're high quality, like aren't they? 15,000 euros for both. Okay. okay. And so in Luxembourg, you get like subsidies for it because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the first official farmer of us, of us all with a new farm created since 30 years. So it's something new for Luxembourgish government. Okay. And so it was so important that we had all these meetings because like the startup and all these things it's it's something new you know what we did all together yeah is this place so you're doing minto you with the bts yes we just turning over the sort of surface layer and exactly with yeah. the um that's well roll on on behind so we can adjust the height mm. so we are only going like five centimeter deep so we it's put like the young elevation. plants exactly on the on the water layer a bit underneath so. yeah Perfect. You said you had some problems initially with compost drying out in the yes. in the dry years. Because normally it's very windy up here, and like our you're like on a hilltop, so, so yeah, like our compost is so woody, it's it's getting uh, dry after a few 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 days, and so we. You find that's helped a lot to just incorporate a bit. Yeah, it's it's like you have the whole surface surface it was getting wet now with the drip lines and not before it was only this um, under the ground. Angle. And so now it's it's getting you can see on the surface that water is sucking more on the, on the whole on the whole surface. Mm, that's yeah. great. The thing I really like about these double skin tunnels is that rather than you've seen like blow up versions where you have a pump blowing air between the two skins this just has a six mil poly rope that's pulling down the inside skin that creates the air gap and insulation it's really smart and the opening system's cool for the side ventilation so you can see Eve's just winding there at the end and that just lifts this whole panel up to like a meter high that vents the whole tunnel pretty cool system so what's one tunnel like this costing it was like when we bought it it was like seven thousand euros seven thousand euros like 15. 15 yeah because of corona now corona doubles prices there you go pretty cool venting system now so you've also got venting up above the door but you can also open this whole side panel yeah, pretty cool it system turns here on this one so you can put it on the legs and nice you can open the whole, go in with a tractor easily. Can't believe they doubled in price. <laughs> Are you like at the ag school as well? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just uh, have no real education in uh, gardening, so I. You just um, decided to start gardening. <laughs> it's not exactly like that. Um, I'm a graphic designer, so I have been working for three or four years, and I found out that I could not be uh, forty hours. Uh, a week sitting, down sitting there and just uh, yeah 
and then I had the opportunity to do an um, uh, how how to call it um, it was like um, a program to to get you do to be a um, coordinator for uh, community gardeners. Mm -hmm. So there I met also Eve, and that was my first. Uh, uh, experience to see if this could be something that I would like to 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 do. Uh, and you did. Yeah, <laughs> and so it turned out that I quit my job, so I took a 20 hours job in graphic design, and I had the time to invest myself uh, to this project, and I also doing other projects. Uh, You've been here from the beginning, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. I, I built it up with with Eve. Well and done. Yeah. It was, it's nice and it works uh, quite nice for me to to do both the jobs at and you can bring your skills to all the yeah, things exactly. here too yeah exactly it's uh, always not just uh, one one thing it's always good to have different skills i think for business mm, good for you sometimes like the self-harvesting somehow like that comes as a shock to me because i don't i wouldn't the part that i don't like is that the, it it's not that organized you have people that don't know what they're doing and it's like it messes up my plan like i i want to be the one harvesting because of that yeah. and it's two qualities that i i i find it intriguing that they come together you enjoy the self-harvesting yeah because you also really for like me the teaching um idea behind it's also something okay. i want to promote and i i think it's a very um it's, 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 we have to teach ki kids how we grow vegetables and we, when we close everything and we do the harvest and they, did, they saw, see it only on the shop mm -hmm. we have missed everything because I think we can only create a future when kids know how t everything is growing and mm -hmm. when they have an idea where it grows mm -hmm. so when we close all our farms we lose all this knowledge and this is why we chose to have self harvest client oil because mm -hmm. For us, it is important to, to even to have school classes all over the next year from Luxembourg coming to the farm and they bring also some money with them. And so it has to, to, to get a gun for the kids and the families where they learn something by coming and harvesting their vegetables. That mm -hmm. was the idea behind. The other idea is that we have not the stuff to do all the work. Mm. Yeah. So we, we, I, I know in Terra you harvest like three times a week. We, in four hours in the morning, Friday morning, we finished. Mm. That was the idea behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool okay. man. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's moments where you're like, oh my god, I wish. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I have sure. members who comment who <laughs> in the <laughs> evening who taught me like one or two hours. But yeah, yeah but it's your members, yeah. so you have to be. Cool yeah, for them. It's the price you're willing to pay for a, a noble cause of education. And that's, exactly, that's um, that's inspiring. Man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got this old this old case <laughs> yeah we have both i haven't seen that for but some I years i wanted only to have written something in it because this was a little bit um fast going <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need to film you it, designed but. this all on cad <laughs> no but this yeah. reflects back to marco's point because you you like precision and order yeah and you're willing to engage in the disorder of community harvest that's really cool yeah. it's a really dynamic so thing. we do all everything or even the buildings well, what will come, and so we had everything finished at the beginning. Super nice. And Good plans. And everything knows where it has to go after. And you made your own contour map of the land with the bunyip level? Yes. Super nice. Yeah, we did everything at our own. Yes. It's, mm. it's a lot of work, a lot of hours, and... Uh, this is the so you do reporting for the customers to show where all the finances where there, go where the and... Money, money is going for yeah. the customers. And always to show... Uh, to explain how much money we need for the season after. So this was this season, so you can see that we have like, uh, it's, it's from January to October, so we, or what we, what we, expenses. Expenses, expenses for was like 180,000 for the moment, and we had like 110 coming in, yeah. income. So for us, it's, it's, so we can show members exactly why prices are going higher or stay on the same level or yeah. why we need more money perfect exactly everyone speaks three or four languages here i think three two or four languages yes this is flyers in three different languages luxembourg style 
<laughs> yeah, everything has to be. And you were just explaining you, you're moving to the model that we've seen in the other farms here where people can choose what they want to pay. So you have your basic price and people can choose to yeah. pay more and that's based on your projections and what you need and the salaries yeah, you're going to exactly. get. It's just full transparency. Yeah, and they can also do... We can have more money for the salaries if we they want to pay more for the baskets. But the what salary are you going for? A uh, thousand euros. Yeah, but he's. You're like he's, apprentice in the yeah. school. So we, uh, it's fixed by the you can't, government. You can't push him for like three thousand. <laughs> no, it, it's it's Next like year. it's like <laughs> fixed by the government. His salary. So you you've got the opportunity to keep. Yeah. We, on after being an apprentice, you can stay as an employee. Yeah, if yeah. he wants. Awesome. Yes. Hopefully. And so it's the team, it's the three of you, essentially? Yeah, so the main team is our three, and Adam is not here for today, but he's a new ah, okay. member of the team. Yeah. And he will be... Uh, but oh, I think he maybe stays only one year, and, and he wants to create his own project again. So, mm. yeah. Well, thanks so much for showing us around, and well done, you folks. You've done a great job, and excited to follow you. Where can people find out about you? I can stick it in the links below the video, but where's the yeah. best place to, to show? Facebook, Facebook Grace, uh, yeah, and uh, if not on our homepage, where we are still working on it for the moment. Cool. It's, it's, yeah, in a few weeks. Yeah, I'll put the links to it. Cool. Nice, great job, gang. Thanks for coming. Okay, last stop on the tour. Going to see the gang at Krautgard. Those of you that watch the Farm Like a Hero tour, you might remember them. We made it. Container gang. Hey. Hi there. Look, this is JM's lovely tiny home, no? Beautiful. Hey, gang. We decided to make a uh, whirlwind YouTube tour, so you are now on YouTube. Oh, and Yoshi is too. My, do my dog's an idiot sometimes with new people, so. We realize, gang, that the light's low and it's going to get dark soon, but are you happy being on the video? Yeah, okay. Great. Why not? We made a little tour today, so we're just sharing it with the world. <laughs> Max, tell us about yes, what is Krautgart. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah, is yeah. Krautgart? Well, Krautgart, that is uh, me, Max, and uh, two other people that you're going to meet. Half of them, one is already gone. That's Jean-Marc, that probably the community already knows from your hero tour. Yeah, some of them will. And you guys are in uh, the back of my book, which of agriculture too. That's right. And so that's really you can cool. see that. <laughs> that's really cool. Here comes the other guy. Mm -hmm. That is Claude. That's the third of our associates where we started this yep. business, basically. And what is Krautgart in a nutshell? In a nutshell, it is a CSA of 120 baskets. Uh, for 100, 150 baskets, excuse me. 150 baskets. And we're producing uh, 30 weeks or 33 weeks of vegetables for those families, and we have a chef. And um, yeah, that's most of our most of our business. We sell a few young plants too, so that's become a part of our business too, as we are producing all our plants. We also sell some plants to customers who do home gardening. And uh, yeah, and you're a group of friends from university, right? Uh, well, Jean-Marc and I, we know each other from, yeah, basically from a kid's age because we grew up in the same village. That's also the same village where we started the business. So that's pretty interesting too. And Claude is a like-minded guy, which our ways crossed in some weird kind of way. But we found each other and then we decided to continue as three. No. And you've actually got two sites, right? So this is one of them? Yeah, so this is our newest one basically. So this one is uh, 2017. This was just pasture. So standard uh, twice or three times mowed. Uh, nothing else. And our first site is a real smaller one and a more extreme one without water, electricity, on sandy soil. And that's a small garden where we started in 2016. So how much bed space do you have overall to produce those 150 shares? Well, uh, strictly bed space, so no paths, that's 2,500. It's 150 15 meter beds with Great. standard uh, 75 centimeter width. And so it's rented have, land? It is all rented land, yeah. 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 And you started up pretty low cost, right? You've gone for shipping container, storage, tool sheds, etc. Yeah. 
Yeah. What do you reckon you invested to start the business? Well, to start the business uh, was in 16. So the first real investment was 15,000. That's 5,000 um, a truck, delivery truck, 5,000 a tunnel, and another 5,000 some materials of all kinds. So tools and nets and stuff like that. I think these figures are all in the back of our book, right? You, I think I detailed reckon it all Mark did a good yeah. job at that too. So yeah. there should be everything detailed in it. And then um, I don't think that in this first starting price, these things are in because these kind of came as soon as we had this place. So we started in 17. We had basically nothing here. I think we bought this on an auction to have a little storage place. And uh, then we reinvested it. Yeah, we got these for a couple of hundred euros. And then we did some smaller investments over the last five years. But the first investment was 15, 15K. And you guys have been quite pioneering in the price setting that everyone's now mimicking with the other CSAs we've been talking to. So you offered this very transparent system where people see your salary at the other end and can choose how they pay. So tell us a bit yeah. how the overall economy looks for you guys now. Well, now, uh, so one thing we did, we basically raised the entry price, which was our fixed price at the beginning. That was 850 euros to enter. And we rolled with that for two seasons. And then we pumped it up the minimum price a little. So that was at 950 for the whole year. And then since we started to open it up to make different categories that people can play uh, can pay more so we can have bigger salaries since we did that we um, uh, put up the average at about 200 euros more so now the average of a basket is 200 euros more than the minimum price awesome. so now uh, i think this year we should be around with the chef and with the plants we should be around 180 185 uh thousand euros i reckon Great. around that and for next year the goal would be 200k because we get another chef and more plans to do because we got awesome infrastructure too that jacob built and uh yeah so 200k for next year would be the plan. awesome cool let's have a look around most of the stuff around here is more or less low tech and also recycle stuff and uh, seeing stuff lying on the road, picking it up or talking to people to get it here. Yeah. Just as the containers that Jean-Marc organized because they were standing like for two years in front of our distribution place. This is kind of your, so you have a separate building in the village where you bring the vegetables and yeah. people pick up their yeah, baskets. Exactly. So and that's in, the, that's in the family of, yeah. of Jean-Marc and he has a, a car stacking there and he just gave us one part of that barn to get installed and to have the distribution to store some stuff yeah and that's a really nice place in the center of that same village and that's also that barn where we sold our first vegetables to in that market and they kind of weigh out their own shares right they yeah you you put a list of what they can take and they weigh that but what's this space you've got like a walking cooler tool yeah, storage the one container is like now basically a, a, a cooler with the fridge for the eggs for the team and some little weighing platform which is uh, uh really nice so that helps with the with the flow it's going to change probably a little next year yeah and we're probably going to have another cooler too because that's really small and it's kind of stacked sometimes and that is a problem so and then the other one is going to be well there's basically a workshop inside there's a workbench and jacob's tools all the drill machines everything technical is inside yeah. here some some wood and then we want to use the storage space the roof space to store uh, other hardware from the gardens the nets and stuff and this is all still in still in development so how does it work with the two sites how do you manage time between the two and one of them's got less infrastructure water electric etc yeah. So uh, we basically use it uh, to our advantage too, because the other the other side you can start earlier. It's a sandy soil, it's even more exposed than this one, so it gets warmer earlier. Uh, and we also adapt crops. So um, on sandy soil, we I make a lot of these crops uh, that take a long time, like parsnips and parsley roots and carrots, and uh, I tried onions and leeks this time too. So also stuff that doesn't take so much um, maintenance all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are doing total no dig? Yeah, yeah. Basically, this side, the most of the beds didn't see a broad fog even. So there's nothing. There was nothing dug or uh, moving in that soil. And we started with the classic method of Charles Downing cardboard, 15 yeah. centimeters of. 
15 centimeters of compound. Who's this, huh? <laughs> hey. It's a young vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Almost two years old. <laughs> and you're one of the founding members that you arrived before our intro screen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Jean-Marc is in Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing a bit of vacation till, till March. Jean-Marc, if you're listening, we miss seeing you. <laughs> You guys are doing all your own stats? Yeah, all your Tell us and stats. show us your, your setup for... Yeah, so this is the newest project on uh, Jacob's side. So this is going to be a huge uh, temperated uh, nursery box for all sizes of plants. And you're selling young plants to people as well? To people as well, yeah. yeah. We always uh, sold our excess plants, but now we really have a, basically a crop plant for those uh, for those plants too. So we really sow on different dates to to get a good period for hobby gardeners also because hobby gardeners doesn't don't work like professional gardeners and they have to kind of shift it towards more towards the spring because they don't have the fleeces they're not so so that went really well and uh, yeah a little bit of uh, organizational space here the kitchen is also going to develop more also the um, planting potting station is going to develop and these are basically the now our final uh, home built uh, nursery boxes heated with cables. Great. And we got a few of these irrigation carpets underneath as water body to store the heat. Nice. If not, uh, yeah, the heat is not distributed nicely. And then you can just put a row cover over the top yeah. to this keep the heat. This is suboptimal, but, but we just did that one because the big box kind of dropped for last year. It was planned, but Jacob got uh, an accident, so he couldn't build it, so we had to improvise like always. So, what's the difference between your. Uh, you've got. Boxes outside, heated ones here. No. I'm guessing the ones outside aren't heated, right? The outside are. Heated oh, they are. And insulated too with the big pla with the big double stick platen. I don't know the word in English. You know. Uh, the channel plastic. plastic. Yeah. 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 The, the big ones and the translucent ones, so they let through 80% of light. That's pretty good. That's How would you use the two types differently? Well, basically the height of plants. So these are designed uh, for the biggest young plants there is. Basically, that's fennel to when the cover is closed they don't hit the cover with their leaves so yeah. usually here should all be small plants included uh, cucumbers and zucchinis and squash dill which are pretty low at the beginning so, so you guys yeah. really represent the low cost do-it-yourself lot in this whole group in terms like a lot of people are buying in young plants here and yeah. it can be economic if you're factoring your time etc but you're really going for homespun totally do it yourself yeah and because uh, our chance was for us it was no discussion from the beginning i love plants i'm also i'm a botanist too so i really like growing stuff and i like to see and observe the whole cycle and have the choice and flexibility yeah and uh, from the start where the garden was really small we kind of also were able to grow the nursery with the business or with the garden itself so it was kind of a slow start and then we got lots of experience and then uh, yeah, we thought uh, that just matches and yeah, should be no other way. So this sort of system is what I recommend most people viewing to go for. Like if you've got the space over a tunnel and heated benches, it's a much more efficient way to do starts. A lot of people that follow my channel, I try and reiterate this, but I'm using lights because I'm so far north that I have to use lights. There's not enough sunlight at the time we're starting seeds. And because heated space is a premium in Sweden, it's so cold, I've gone with a very small space, easy to heat and vertical space. But this is way more practical, logistics speaking, and pretty cheap, right? How much do you reckon it costs to put together uh, a box? It's a pretty expensive bottom plate, so that's these the facade plates. I don't know what material it is, but it's pretty, uh, pretty tough and really thin and really nice for the design. It's pretty heavy, but one box like this, cables included, and thermostat included, yeah, 250 maybe, because the cable and the thing is already 100. So, so a thousand euros, you can run your all your starts out of that pretty much. Oh yeah, you get you get you get a hell you get three hundred and fifty plants in one in one of these, in big pots like these strawberries right now. And uh, yeah, you can do a lot. Uh, once you seeded the flats or the quick pots, whatever you put it inside here, and that's heated up pretty easily. It's uh, not a fancy construction, but we're probably gonna build another one in a year or two. And you can just put the quick pots in. And then no sunlight hits it, 
so that the, the flats don't dry out so you have to water once and as soon as you see something popping you Just can take them out it. and put them under light too if not they stretch too far nice and you can stack in volume you don't have to use all your precious space in the surface so they can get a hell out of quick so this is are you starting to sow salads in january uh the first ones yeah, yeah. end of january you, so this i is started a... that two years ago usually it's valentine's day here okay to start the, the, <laughs> the seeding show yeah. so it's a really handy thing to have when you're in this outdoor setting too yeah, yeah. super nice at least you guys have got a swedish guy on the team haven't you so you've started incorporating fikas this is a rita fika <laughs> look at that thanks so much Okay, overwintering crops. Yeah, we don't get that in Sweden. So we uh, had some experience, a few uh, experiments a few years ago with carrots uh, out of the Coleman winter gardening book to sow carrots at the end of the season to be able to harvest it right at the start from the season. Mm. And people love really nice baby overwintered carrots in their first baskets. So that's what we see here. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that uh, most people don't do. But now I think everybody also also does it because uh, yeah, we openly share stuff, we talk about stuff, we we help each other out, and uh, that's a big part of like you guys are all in this lovely situation, right? Where you all meeting up, sharing between Terra and with all the other farmers in the group, right? And that's a really we beneficial know, process. Very, basically full transparency as far as I'm concerned yeah. and that's really nice that's a big advantage of such a small country we really interconnected I think <laughs> how did that happen though did you just make it happen between yourselves I mean there were so few guys at the start I mean we started uh, two years after them I think and then through um, uh, we have a lot of events in Luxembourg where then uh, Terra and we, we have stands, informative stands or we sell juices or whatever. And then most of the guys that started at the um, uh, Market Garden too, they just came to these events and we kind of even got to meet each other before they even started. And then, I don't know, we always had a kind of network that kind of worked pretty well. And then we just met up and we understand each other really well and yeah, we kind of and you're all it's so obviously you're all influencing each other and refining little things that work well and yeah, yeah it's great yeah sharing knowledge tools and services as well like people they have access to machine oh, can you come over one day help me move some compost yeah sure i will oh you got the six row seed out can we try it yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's really nice mm. <laughs> so this was the what the original plot or is uh, this, this is, a newer plot this is two this should be 218 then yeah Mm -hmm. And our the the, um, the the field works in different ways on different spots in the garden and, to, and here it is kind of way wetter and sometimes when it's heavy raining in winter too water tends to come down from the hill sort of and these plots you see it, it they eat the compost much more quicker than the beds down there so I think there's just some weird activity that just um, digests the compost quicker yeah and here's the mo most of the there's the heaviest wheat pressure too also from the pasture so from the parameter it flies in but these are the most difficult um plots to to handle the weeds for some some reason yeah and also you get you even get some in these dry years you get you get these huge rifts basically also so the soil is real is much more heavy than down there or just next to it so here's kind of kind of a the problem plus in the garden, yeah. so to speak. And you guys, as really old friends, you know, it's an interesting arrangement, I guess, to start a business together. How's that been, like, dynamically, socially, between you, to, like, go from friendship to running an actual company together? Yeah, uh, well, it is... Uh, uh, in the, in the end, after five years of doing the business, we really realized that it's not easy and that there are some risks that you don't realize from the start because everybody does his evolution in the business, I guess. And in and personal also, life, right? You're having families and... Personal life, different personal lives, different personal contexts. And we try to fit these three contexts in one tiny little garden. And that's uh, also sh with shared responsibilities over the whole period, which is a strength. Um, 
a strength from the start, but it creates uh, sometimes unintended consequences and they have to be dealt with uh, with great care. And uh, but we kind of in the process of yeah straighten things out that kind of sometimes also drag out through the seasons and you don't uh, you don't meet up enough and but we're in a good process hmm. so in the end uh, yeah it's really not easy to especially if you if you know if you know you uh, each other for really long so you had your teenage years and you had uh, everything you, you know the guy you know and then you do the business and some and then seriousness and formality uh, comes in and yeah. Is that do you share that same sort of experience? Yeah, more or less. For, well, for me, it's still a um, special situation because I uh, get got to know them a little bit later. Yeah. So I don't know the mark as long as Max yeah. does. Yeah. So I I joined uh, uh, already existing uh, friendship, so to say. But uh, since the beginning, we had um, the same interests. And I think through this project we also got closer, so it can also have very positive sides. It all depends on personal context, but yeah, mainly uh, I, I share what Max said. Yeah. Solutions for that is key is communication at the right time. And uh, it's, I mean, out of my point of view, it is sometimes to fight to find the right time is not easy. And, to, and sometimes then to try and force the right time is also not easy and um, uh, yeah it is communication plain and simple yeah to sit down and share and not only share the technical hey you need to do this or that and that yeah. or i'm going to you need to do this and that but also before we talk about work how are you feeling you know mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. at uh, how's, yeah, yeah. how's things for you and that and you really do that in the garden us. we or? do that in the garden like uh, in the, as a core team and then we, I also make sure that I do it individually with not only the core team, but also all the people around, apprentices, interns, individually, mm -hmm. individually yeah, yeah. yeah, once a week, sitting down or every two weeks sometimes, but uh, providing that space. So it's not always in the collective and it's not always like yeah. me talking to you because I have more confidence or whatever, but like creating those spaces. Yeah. And I find that that has helped balance out a lot of things that would probably not have been dealt with if we didn't have those spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so you yeah. have like meetings and one-to-ones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We and also technical wanted meetings, to but also implement the ones-on-ones on ones. and it sometimes sometimes it works and then sometimes it doesn't work and then there's somebody on holiday and then oh yeah we didn't mm -hmm. have the meeting and yeah. yeah. But uh, I guess we're still on the on the good track plus we yeah. now that we I don't I don't know if we plan to hire people next year but now we kind of hired two more people full time uh city either so for indeterminate time the same pay it's the same same wage than we do and we kind of um maybe we're at the start of creating a new core I don't know if that makes sense mm -hmm. um and uh are they sharing the same responsibility as you no no so no they're on the same level, but there's still a bit of a like a, there's a different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in the in the case for Rita, she came this season. This season, I mean, like I don't have to tell you, and there's so much happening and yeah. changing. Yeah. She basically started with a friend of hers as an apprentice to basically, whether end of this season, go out and start their own thing. Okay. And now here she is without her friend getting but really, hired full time. Yeah. Your friend didn't, she's decided it wasn't the life for her, yeah. right? But then you decided to move in and yeah, I mean, be an employee. I, we'd always been talking about the second yeah. season anyway. Yeah. Um, and it just developed in a way that we... I think I took on some responsibilities that weren't necessarily part of the internship and I quite enjoyed that a lot and it just developed that way i think very naturally and yep. that's where we are right now so you it's like a yeah it's just a natural evolution and transition right and it seems like three Pretty four much. years is a very common place to mm -hmm. you know reevaluate where things are at and where you're going and yeah yeah and the wobblers are just beautiful yeah is this a uh, caterpillar tunnel from from you from, from me <laughs> nice yeah, watering. Uh, well, on this side, we're going to install a wobbler system. Uh, we have just a three quarter inch feed for the water. So that's not a lot of flow. 
So we have to see if we're gonna invest in having a bigger water line from the street, which shouldn't be too complicated. That's so you're, how, how have you been irrigating up to now? We have been irrigating this year with some mobile wobbler rigs. So I just connected half inch hoses and put the wobblers where I needed them. And in the past we had just these Gardena sprinklers, um, which did a pretty good job because everything is square and they kind of cover uh, things pretty good. But with the wind and weather, it's sometimes difficult uh because uh, yeah we're quite conservative of water we don't have a strict number of liters we put down on each bed because we just weren't able and we saw that even in droughts no dig and the vegetables we plant and the timings we do they kind of are fine most of the time and on the other side uh we just have a pond that collects the water from the tunnel and we have a big Honda pump that um, puts the water in big tanks, 2,000 liter tanks, on a high platform, and then just by um, just by atmospheric pressure, we feed um, yeah usual low pressure drip lines mm. downhill. That that works wonderfully. But on that side, we just have the water from the pond, and every drip goes into the tunnel. Yeah. Outdoors, no irrigation. So, what is the future of Kraut got right now in your heads? What are you thinking? Well, uh, first step would be uh, the, to create the new core team, basically with the people we hired, uh, hopefully long term. Uh, and uh, next year is going to be much around solidifying what we created this year and finishing some improvements that we didn't do mm. this year and increasing a little the uh, production for the chef. So we're going to have a few other chef plots. You're kind of keeping the shares the same and increasing yeah, the to shares the shares. Stay the same. The shares stay the same and we want to sell more young plants and we are going to add another chef. So yeah. that's basically the enterprise that's going to change and then infrastructural work and uh, yeah, giving the, the gardening and newbies also a repetition of one season. I mean, playing it again one more time to solidify their experience. Mm -hmm. And then go from there, I guess. Yeah. Mm. And then over the years, we started some some side businesses. Mm -hmm. We are selling our young plants. It's actually a good business to do when you're um, when you're growing your young plants yourself to also sell them to your customers and uh, to other people. So we are trying to make that more efficient. Um, yeah, trying to diversify maybe a little bit uh, when when the core workers get more free time to, to think of other side projects maybe or to, to make uh, like selling the stuff to the chefs more efficient and maybe growing some herbs. I, I'm, I'm pretty interested in growing herbs and maybe starting a little little tea brand just to experiment. Mm. That would be some fantastic thing but uh, yeah still uh, something to develop. And what we Super maybe nice. can also say, or that Rita could also say, this, the, the sales next to the CSA box. Because we mm. have a few partners, we sell next to the CSA box, we sell eggs. Who knows, maybe we're going to have chickens again <laughs> with, a, with a proper grazing plan. You've got a bit of pasture around the back here, haven't yeah. you? But, yeah. yeah. And we sell some honey, we sell some olive oil, and then we thought about maybe a good vinegar. We already sold bread next to the baskets but that with the suppliers it's pretty difficult and sometimes it doesn't work and the bread is not good at all too well, at least not the ones we really want to want to sell so there's ideas and partners too potentially for that to increase more sales next to baskets yeah. mm. and to have more time and capacity to also work on the community side yeah to there is already a great community i find and there's a good good connection with our members but to be able to also yeah as you said to maybe offer some things on the side and to increase it and also the last two years was very special with corona so our distributions have changed dramatically and yeah to see how this is going to evolve next year yeah yeah we kind of went from a uh, pack your own so you come into the barn and pack your baskets with some boards like it is actually a two at terror like this yeah and so we didn't want or couldn't let the people come into the barn uh, to do that so we kind of switched for last year as a driving system so fully like okay. driving system you come you drive by you get your finished box into the trunk and off you go <laughs> <laughs> and that is really that works really well and we have a lot of experience yeah. gained we never pack boxes and now we have kind of a routinely <laughs> pack the boxes nice. so that was interesting and many people 
sadly they love it too. I mean, convenience. <laughs> nobody hates convenience. <laughs> I think the light is such that we we are wrapping up this tour because the it's going to be super grainy. But tell us uh, where can people find out more about Crowdcut? Where's well, the best Crowdcut place? Crowdcut on Instagram and Facebook. Just Crowdcut. And if you wanna if you wanna see what we do and also recipes and other cool stuff, it's uh, Crowdcut.com. Perfect. I'll stick it in the show notes. <laughs> Thanks so much for showing us the farm, folks. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, back from the tour, and to finish it, we got to eat meat from Jeff's farm. And Alex, Marco's brother, is doing reverse seared barbecued Angus beef, and we got some steaks to add. We're gonna eat good. Well, that wraps up an amazing few days, and I want to end with. Thank you, Marco, for his incredible hosting. And it's been amazing. It's been such fun to see these farms. I hope you enjoyed it. But Marco's a very humble man. I wanted to just show off some of his skills. Not only is he an awesome farmer, he's a capoeira teacher, and he's a brilliant musician, but he also makes instruments. Check out these beauties. What have we got here? These are like guitars. That's a classical guitar. That's a Cretan lira. And this one here is a Greek gypsy guitar, steel string. Beautifully made in the workshop downstairs. And there's more over here. We've got bazookis and all kinds of things. Beautiful craftsmanship. And so, I thought the best way to end the video is that tune that we played on our hang drums that we used to busk with. Maybe you want to hear it played properly on the instrument that it's designed for. Thanks so much for watching the video, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'm very excited to share all the links below if you want to find out more about the farms. And we'll end on this beautiful tune.